Nature is not a place to visit, it's our home. Nature is all that we see. Animals, insects, disappearing into their surroundings, using deceptions, disguises, lures. Nature is all that we hear. The call of an eagle, the hiss of ocean spray, the rumble of thunder, the doings of a cricket. The wonderful beauty of nature, the crucial, fragile affinity between animal life and their environment. All of this is World of the Wild. Formed by volcanism and the clashing of tectonic plates, Mountains are dramatic and varied landscapes, largely uninhabited by man, with increasing elevation creating distinctive habitat bands. Each mountain can be host to several distinctive microclimates, from densely forested foothills to seemingly barren peaks. Here, even different aspects of the same slope can bring about stunning variance in the life that inhabits them. To occupy these challenging ranges, animals must be hardy and adaptable to change. In this episode, we learn why bears rule the mountain forests, follow the seasonal migrations of elk, experience the high life of marmots, scale the slopes with bighorn sheep, and prowl the mountain ranges with pumas. While they are among the largest terrestrial carnivores on the planet, bears have a somewhat undeserved reputation for aggression, and many of their adaptations to their environment are far from ferocious. Weighing upwards of half a ton, and armed with sharp, retractable claws, there are few creatures capable of taking on this apex predator, except, of course, for other bears. With eight species found predominantly in the Northern Hemisphere, bears can be found occupying a range of habitats, but are most commonly associated with mountainous areas of forest. With an exceptional sense of smell, possibly better than any other mammal, this is the bear's principal sense for locating food within their often challenging habitat. And unlike most carnivores, bears' teeth are adapted to chewing significant quantities of vegetable matter, enabling them to make use of a wider range of the mountain's food resources. In the lakes and rivers of their mountain habitat, fish form a significant part of the bear's diet, and they have adopted a range of behavioral modifications in order to procure them. Wading or swimming in the waterways, bears will often fully submerge as they patrol the shallows, seeking to pin their slippery prey with their claws. When spawning events bring greater concentrations of fish, groups of normally solitary bears will gather at strategic points along the rivers. These seasonal gatherings are not without conflict as the bears fight to claim the most desirable fishing spots. With prime real estate going to dominant males, the bears attempt to snatch the fish mid-air as they leap their way up the cascading rapids. During these boom times, bears will only eat the most nutritious parts of their catch, discarding the remainder for the scavengers that have also gathered for the feast. Oh. 
Avoiding the privations of the cold mountain winters, bears retreat to their dens in a form of hibernation. These dormant periods can see the bears underground for up to 200 days. With heart rates slowing to just nine beats a minute, they will not eat, drink or defecate the entire time. Re-emerging in the spring, pregnant females will have given birth during the winter sleep and guide their cubs into the outside world. Playful and inquisitive, the cubs will remain close by their affectionate mother's side for around two years. Learning the ways of their mountain habitat, they will also be protected from its dangers. Overhunting has traditionally had a devastating effect on bear populations, but today habitat loss and fragmentation is their greatest threat. Intelligent animals, bears have displayed behavioral adaptations to avoid human contact, in some cases becoming nocturnally active and learning to scavenge from urban areas. But the reduction in wilderness inevitably reduces wildlife, and for large, wide-ranging creatures such as bears, conservation of mountain and forest habitats is the most effective means of protecting their numbers. One of the largest deer species in the world, elk are native to the forests of North America and Eastern Asia. Comfortable in a range of habitats, it is the mountains where this species has its stronghold. Having spent the summer months fattening themselves on the mountain's high grazing grounds, as winter approaches, elk move down from their elevated meadows to avoid the worst of the cold weather. The descent is a gradual one, as they make the most of the available vegetation while it lasts. Spending most of the year in small single-sex herds, during the winter, elk reunite and endure the cold months together in the sheltered valleys and woodlands around the foot of the mountain. Feeding sparingly on shrubs and tree bark, they pour through the snow in search of buried grass. The increased herd size provides increased vigilance as scout elk take turns keeping watch for the mountain predators that are also feeling the winter's bite. Typically shedding their horns early in winter to conserve energy, when spring comes, male elk begin growing these bony structures again at a rapid rate of two and a half centimeters a day. Reaching lengths of over a meter and weighing nearly 20 kilograms, when the antlers are fully developed, their protective velvet covering is stripped off by rubbing against a tree and the bull elk are ready to begin competing for mates. Bugling to attract females and challenge rival males, the bull elk's distinctive scream-like bellowing echoes for miles around the mountain. Sizing each other up, competing bulls display their fighting prowess through posturing. If neither backs down, they will lock horns and wrestle to establish dominance. Often sustaining serious injuries, successful males may be required to fight continually in order to secure their harem of breeding females. Following the retreating snow, the elk migrate back up the mountain to return to their high grazing grounds by early summer. 
Here the females give birth to their young. While the spotted fawns are able to stand by the time they are just 20 minutes old, they remain especially vulnerable to predation and will remain close to their mothers until next season's offspring are produced. A resourceful species, elk have proven remarkably successful when introduced to foreign environments as far flung as Australia. Within their native habitat, they have lost much of their original range and today exist primarily in more remote mountainous locations. The largest member of the squirrel family, the marmot, has successfully integrated with elevated mountain zones in order to live the high life. As they rise in height, mountains form distinctive habitat bands. With increased altitude comes decreased temperatures and oxygen. And moving up the mountain slopes, the vegetation becomes more stunted and sparse as the forests of the foothills give way to the bare rock of the peaks. Few mammals are equipped to survive in the tough terrain of these higher reaches. The charismatic marmot is a rare exception. Marmots are well attuned to rarefied air, with large colonies regularly living at elevations of over 4,000 meters. Of the 15 species of marmot, most eke out an existence in desolate mountain habitats by adopting a wired diet. Primarily herbivores, they target a variety of grasses and roots, even consuming moss and lichens from the exposed mountain rock. And in times of hardship, marmots have been known to hunt insects and may even resort to cannibalism. Among the most gregarious of the squirrel family, marmots tend to live in highly social groups comprised of a dominant male with several female mates and their young. While social grooming and play fights are common, the colony's most important function is watchfulness. Predated upon by the many carnivores of the mountains, marmots keep a constant eye for danger. Rising comfortably on their hind legs to stand lookout, they are in continual communication with a series of whistles, screams and teeth chattering. Excellent diggers Marmots construct elaborate burrow systems, and more than half this creature's life can be spent underground. Maintaining a series of simple bolt holes for quick escape from predators, colonies will also construct more complicated refuges for sleeping and hibernating. While their stocky build and dense fur coat affords the marmot considerable protection from the elements, the mountain winters drive these squirrels underground for up to eight months of the year. During this period, they will live off their fat reserves, and when they finally re-emerge, a typical marmot may have lost up to two-thirds of its body weight. Having evolved so successfully to inhabit their specific mountain habitat band, Global warming poses a particular challenge to marmots. 
Warmer temperatures can reduce the mountain's already limited vegetation, and marmot populations have been recorded relocating to higher zones. Marmot numbers, for the most part, remain healthy around the world, but there is only so much mountain for this specialized creature to climb. A true mountain specialist, the bighorn sheep boasts an array of adaptations that see it prosper where few others dare to tread. Native to North America, bighorn sheep make their home on the steep, uneven mountainsides, avoiding predators by occupying a range that most creatures find difficult or impossible to negotiate. Feeding in alpine meadows, they fearlessly take on rugged cliff faces and treacherous gravelly slopes with remarkable sure-footedness. Related to mountain goats, bighorn sheep display many shared adaptations for their mountain-faring lifestyle. Split hooves can form to hug uneven surfaces, while rough hoof bottoms provide natural grip. Keen vision aids in navigating precarious passages, and uncanny balance allows the sheep to stand on rock ledges just a few centimeters wide. Capable of jumping six meters, big horns can scale uphill or descend steep stretches at unmatched speeds. So innate are the bighorn's climbing skills that within a day of birth, newborns can keep pace with the herd. Feeding on seasonally available forage, during the warmer months bighorns favor grasses, while cold winters will see them switch to more woody plant life. For the desert-dwelling bighorns, cactus varieties provide an abundant food source year-round. The distinctive curved horns of the males can weigh up to 14 kilograms, as much as the rest of the bones in their entire body. Head-butting competitions are a means of establishing dominance within the herd and securing mating rights during breeding season. Lunging into the clashes, the crack of horns can be heard throughout the mountains, with some fights lasting for hours. While resistant to the cold, bighorns are not able to travel through deep snow. And during winter, they move to the lower regions of the mountains, favoring slopes with limited snow buildup. A versatile species, bighorns have also adapted to survive in the mountains of the desert. Scaling the red rock promontories, they are found at elevations of 1,200 meters. In this climate, the sheep have evolved to withstanding scorching temperatures and are able to attain most of their water from the plants they eat. With a population believed to have once been over two million, by the early 20th century, hunting and introduced diseases from domestic livestock had reduced bighorn numbers to just several thousand. But the bighorn is a conservation success story. With hunting restrictions, game reserves, and reintroduction programs, increasing numbers and saving the species from falling over the precipice.
a creature of many names. The puma, also commonly known as the cougar, is highly attuned to prowling the mountain ranges and ambushing unwary prey. Occupying the largest range of any wild animal in the Americas, the puma has come to be known by more names than any other creature in the natural world. Proving adaptable to almost every type of habitat they encounter, as their mountain lion moniker suggests, it is the mountains where they are most at home. Like most felines, pumas are solitary creatures. Establishing individual territories, they prefer regions with dense vegetation or rocky cover to launch ambush attacks, utilizing their enlarged, retractable clawed front paws to clutch their prey. With proportionally the largest hind legs of the cat family, the puma is granted enhanced climbing and sprinting ability and can leap easily over challenging mountain terrain. More active at night and around dawn or dusk, pumas spend the majority of daylight hours at rest. Those that are spotted during the day are more likely young males who can roam vast distances as they seek out a suitable range away from the established territory of dominant males. These searching journeys can even see the cats crossing substantial bodies of water, albeit reluctantly. Active year-round, pumas are generalist predators and will eat any animal they can catch, from small insects to large game. Capable of dragging prey several times their own weight, pumas maximize their feeding by hiding their kills from other mountain carnivores, returning to eat over a period of days. Unlike many carnivores, pumas are unlikely to engage in scavenging behavior, rarely consuming prey they have not killed themselves. Parenting is solely the domain of female pumas, and they are noted for their fiercely protective behavior around their cubs. Born with spots, the cubs will remain reliant on their mother for around two years, learning how to stalk and hunt before striking out on their own. A mysterious animal, puma numbers are subject to speculation. But, although persecuted as a pest species in parts of their range, their wide distribution across the Americas and ability to adapt to various habitats are positive factors in their favor. Spectacular geological features in their own right, mountains are home to a diversity of wildlife. And in this episode, we have seen the mighty bear, the roving elk, resourceful marmots, sure-footed bighorn sheep, and sly pumas. Playing a crucial role in determining the weather patterns and climate of their surrounding lands, some mountains are continuing to rise while other ranges are slowly shrinking, weathered away by wind and water. Historically protected by their inaccessibility, mountains today are increasingly exploited for their resources through logging and mining. 
Preserving these magnificent landscapes is an ongoing effort and one that is vital to the life they contain and the surrounding life that they influence.